After two long years, I finally watched again seasonal anime, and what a great season it was to watch. Yo, I'm Retard, and I decided to do a tier list with my garbage opinions, so just sit down and enjoy. Konosuba. 11 out of 10, absolute S tier. I love everything that is Konosuba. I'm the guy who watched the OVAs and ranked them 10 out of 10. Am I biased? Yes. Would I rather watch the third season? Absolutely. But I do not fucking care. This is my tier list, this is not objective at all, and this is Konosuba, so 10 out of 10, S tier. Next. Dr. Stone, you can never go wrong with Dr. Stone. It's enjoyable, it's really good. Unfortunately, my IQ is lower than the room temperature, so I have no fucking idea what is Senku talking about. But that still doesn't change the fact that it's solid A tier. Hell's Paradise, considering that this is from the author that was assistant for Tatsuki Fujimoto with Fire Punch and also creator of Ayashimon, what did I expect? Definitely this. Great looking action, great looking waifus, weird plot, supernatural, just nothing new from the assistant of Tatsuki Fujimoto, and I love it. Yeah, there were some things that I kinda didn't like, but it turns out to be part of the story, so there is really nothing more to say than A tier. Sister Isekai. You know that one series where the main character gets sent to another world, but his mother gets sent with him and she's super overprotective but also really do thing to the MC? Yeah, replace mother with big sister and you have good idea what this series is about. This is, by the way, the real description for the manga. But yeah, it summarizes it really well. MC is absolutely and utterly useless, his sister is absolutely and utterly obsessed with her younger brother and she is way too overprotective and way too horny. And th that's it. It's literally MILF isekai, but instead of sexy MILF, you have now horny and sexy sister. And I completely down for that, but still, it's fucking dog shit, so D. Why Eliana ended up at the Duke's Mansion is another otome game genre, where a girl gets killed and then she's reincarnated into another world from a novel she read. I'm not into these otome game genres, I feel like I've already said this sentence somewhere, but this is already the second otome story that I've enjoyed and was surprised where this anime took its story. A tier. It has really enjoyable characters, it has really enjoyable love development, and overall, it was just nice and chill story to get after heavenly delusion. Speaking of heavenly delusion, yeah, that was just something that no one expected to see. From unknown anime to the best anime of this season. What do I even say about this anime? It's weird. Also, the timeline is really confusing, but it adds to its mysterious story. Also, if you pay attention to those little details in the story, it will all just come together. And it's really fucked up. It has good looking animation, it has action, it has depression. A lot. A lot of depression. But what I think stands out the most than depression are the interactions between Kiruko and Maru. Not only that they are well done characters, but the interactions between them adds to the realism of their friendship. Absolutely hidden gem masterpiece where one time it's relatable comedy and second time you just want to sit at the corner of your room and just cry in depression and thinking about killing yourself. S tier. Oshinoko manga was already a perfection and this time just brings it to another level with things that are possibly only in anime format. Colors, sound, music, voice acting. Saying that this anime adaptation is perfection to the manga is still understatement. It just took the story of Oshinoko to its absolute peak. But what made Oshinoko so good was obviously the first episode. This was the best decision ever made in anime history. The fact that the first episode is 1 hour and 20 minutes long, adapting the first volume and the whole story of Ai Hoshino and her children wouldn't feel the same if it was adapted to 4 episodes and the last having the closure of Ai. It would take one third of the anime to just get started. So the fact that this whole start was adapted to only one long episode is the best part and the best start of this glorious story full of lies and intrigue. Also, Yoasobe is fucking goated, bro. S tier. And also, also, if you are wondering, Akane is best girl. Gotobu no Hanayome, I mean Megami no Cafe Terase was a nice and peaceful anime to watch after some heaven and hell. This story really tries to be Gotobu no Hanayome not only by the fact that there is five potential wives, but also their personalities which are very similar to another five potential wives. A Tier. Also, if you are wondering, Akane was my best girl right from the beginning and it was the perfect choice. Wait, what? But why do I feel like I've seen this exact scenario of this quiet girl loving her own things, expressing her feelings as first one? Oh god, it's Miku all over again. Yamada Kun to level 999. Fun laugh story that will never happen in real life, so please stop lying about me ever finding a girlfriend in a video game. <laughs> please. A tier. Also, Akana is pretty cute and best girl. 
What the fuck is going on here? Oh, Shoujo Magical Destroy is a fucking first weeb war. It's really weird, and you kinda have no fucking idea what is this anime, until the last three episodes where it finally find its place. Originally, I wanted to put it at low B, but that ending, god fucking damn it, it slaps. I still have no fucking idea what was this anime about, and I feel like I'm experiencing first season of ReZero again, where I have even more questions than answers, but holy shit, that ending was awesome. A tier. By the way, did you know that Anarchy Chan real name is Akabane? Wait, hold on. Akabane. 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 What the actual fu- Also, can we talk about the opening? That is the most weirdest and original opening I've ever seen. It is so fucking great and I'm so glad that Amy is getting more recognition. But holy! Whoever made that opening must have been on five different drugs at the same time because normal thinking person wouldn't do this absolutely masterpiece of a trip. Speaking of drugs, UFO table and their anime, Demon Slayer, the Swordsmith Village of Backstory's arc. Oh uh, yeah, this season was definitely way more boring than the previous arcs. I just wasn't nailed to my chair with sweat watching the action. On the contrary, I found this arc really boring and dog shit. Let's start with the obvious, the villains. They didn't feel so ominous and strong like the previous villains. They are more like fillers to introduce the marks. Also, let's talk about the fucking backstories in this arc. There were so many of them in the middle of the fight three times in one episode. I do not fucking care about some idiot that lost his parents to demon. Yeah, no fucking shit, bro. This is story about demon. And the last thing I absolutely hate about Demon Slayer as a whole is the comedy. Oh my god, it's so Sean and Jump like comedy. One time there is a serious story with people dying and then boom. Flashy colors, funny faces, joking around, it feels like totally different story all of a sudden. Like, make your mind, am I supposed to cry and shiver at this dramatic ending or am I supposed to die of love because of this goofy ass character? The only reason why Demon Slayer is so popular is because of UFO Table. If it was animated the same way as some shitty isekai, no one would fucking watch it. If I would lose Tegan Makima and she would tell me to watch this anime, I would still look into her eyes and say no. I would say no to those eyes. Do you get how bad this anime is? Why the fuck is this story about nothing so popular? B tier, maybe even C tier. Fuck Demon Slayer, stop praising it as the best anime action story ever. It's overrated dog shit. Ah, <sighs> here, I said it. I finally said it. It's overrated dog shit. Now I just wonder, who the fuck hurt me? Oh yeah, Tensei Kizoku no Isekai, fuck the rest of the name, I don't bother reading it. Yeah, no, this is the reason why I am so hurt. This was such a pain to watch this. This was just your typical shit Isekai, where the main character is just way too OP, he speedruns through everything, plus it's all portrayed as comedy. This anime was so bad that I even started to drink, and I don't even drink at all. So yeah. To summarize this anime, I even wrote a little poem, so... <clears throat> Age is just a number, prison is just a place. Raise your glorious hammer and smash right to space. Life is a game, sometimes you win. Lolicons can be so lame unless you have twin. Scripts can be laid when it passes the date. Better to comf your mind, so take your sister and go on a date. Fuck this shit, if you like it, please unsub and never watch me again. F for making me alcoholic. No, you know what? F for fuck you. You're going to garbage. Waste of time, worse than Isekai Cheat Magician. Kaminam Isekai no Kamisama Katsudo. Ah, yet another Isekai, but this one looks actually pretty- Yo, yo, yo! Oh, anyway. As I said, we've got a lot of Isekai this season, and this one looks pretty good. Ha! Ah, fuck is that? Jesus! At this point, you can't even take this anime seriously. Obviously, it was made with passion for shit posts and memes. I mean, look at this. This is just normal footage of a guy on a tractor made in AI. Was this anime shit? Abso-fucking-lutely. But this is the most self-aware anime in years. They obviously knew what they were doing. Or probably not. I am 100% certain they were ultra drunk and stoned doing this anime. But I had a lot of fun. So, I guess, A? I don't know. Marshall is epitome if one punch man had baby with Harry Potter and it somehow fucking works. Seeing this guy solve every problem without any magic and magical world is just peak comedy. A tier. Yu Shinda, aka Thick Thighs Saves Lives. The only good religion. Also, I know you shouldn't add openings and endings to scoring, but god damn, this shit slaps harder than my grandpa. Masayoshi is absolutely goated. If this man released a song just him hitting a rock against the wall, I would put it on replay for three hours. But that does not 
nothing to do with the anime. So B tier. Isekai Shokan wa Nidome Des. Another Isekai this season. Please fucking stop. It's really bad. And just because you have good idea doesn't mean it's gonna be good. A protagonist who is teleported to another world for the second time. How can you fuck that up? Really easy. Look at this anime. They fuck this idea up. I'm tired of shitty Isekais. F tier. I got Rizzler cheat skill in another world and become a Rizzler in the real world too. Even after finishing this anime, I still have no fucking idea what this story was about. It's Isekai, romance, slice of life, bad CGI, everything. The only good thing about this anime that still blows my mind is the somehow really fucking good animation, but overall the anime is absolutely boring garbage. I would say if it weren't for the 8th episode. What, what, what happened there? It was absolute boring shit. Then 8th episode came and from dog shit CGI and drizzling every single girl, this motherfucker just wrestling a fucking bear and no one is questioning it. Like, yeah, that's fucking normal for 18 year old student to go toe and toe with a fucking bear, but then to absolutely finish this, he fucking suplex 200 kilo bear, like, what the fuck is this anime? This single episode just changed my whole mindset in this anime. It's just the best fucking anime ever. Like, where else will you see in an anime that is trying to be normal and then this motherfucker is wrestling a fucking bear and he just suplex to him and no one is fucking acknowledging that this happened. That's absolutely perfect. S tier. Death Mount Deathplay. Finally, a good isekai, more specifically reverse isekai, with the main protagonist being known as the corpse god, is now in our world in normal human body with still his superpowers. Kinda. What I like about this anime is how they actually care about something else than the main protagonist being too much OP and having harem. Because here they are focusing on two different stories. Our corpse god who just wants to live fully, and the police who are investigating this assassin group where blah 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 blah. It's actually finally entertaining isekai with more than harem and OP Kirito wannabe A tier. And yeah, that's my tier list. There are a few animes I unfortunately didn't watch, but after two years watch this many anime, I think that's impressive. Also, before I end this video, I thought of an idea on how to make this generic tier list video a bit more entertaining, with giving a awards. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Grunch... Uh, uh, my awards. And the first award, the best anime opening goes to... Amy, Magical Destroyer. The next award, the best opening song goes to... I... I don't know. There were just so many good songs. Last week when I wrote this script, it won Yosube Idol. Now I fucking love work from Millennium Parade. And if this video will take me another week, it would win Innocent Arrogance because that song is starting to grow to me. So let's just say that work from Millennium Parade won. But holy shit, this season was absolute bliss for anime songs. I mean, we got Masayoshi Oishi, Shinda for anime, Yushaka Shinda, Millennium Parade and Shina Ringo work for Hell's Paradise, Yosube Idol for Oshinoko, A Anime Magical Destroyers for Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers, Okazaki Taiku Knockout for Marshall, Bish Innocent Arrogance for Heavenly Delusion. They are just all fucking bangers. And now, the most prestigious award, Best Girl of Spring 2023, goes to Yuzuriha from Hell's Paradise. And then there is the last award for the Best Anime of Spring 2023. And after some really hard decision making, meaning finally watching Heavenly Delusion, there has to be only one winner, and I decided that the Best Anime of Spring 2023 is... Oshinoko. I know Heavenly Delusion was absolutely masterpiece in its own way, but it's the same as comparing Oyasumi Pumpun with Berserk. They are both 10 out of 10, but totally different genres and story. And I enjoyed Oshinoko just a little bit more. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. By the way, you can let me know what do you think about my taste. Is it garbage or am I just god of opinions? Anyway, hope you have great rest of your day or night and I see you next time. Goodbye.